Okay, we're going to find the power series expansion for the function ln of 1 plus x. And just like in the previous video about finding the power series for inverse tangent x, we are going to ask ourselves, is there any connection between our best friend and ln of 1 plus x? Well, if we differentiate this, we get 1 over 1 plus x. And this looks really similar to our best friend, isn't it? So the strategy is, let's go ahead and find a power series for 1 over 1 plus x, and then we can just integrate that, and we can get to ln of 1 plus x. And now let's put that down in action. This is the same as integrating 1 over 1 plus x dx like this. And you know the deal. This is the same as integral 1 over 1 like this, because we have to match this right here. Instead of the plus x, we are going to look at that as minus negative x. And now this will be our new input, right? So we have the dx right here as well. Well, from here, we can just plug in negative x into all these x right here. And that's how we can find the power series for 1 over 1 plus x. I will show you both the expanded version and also the sigma sum version, right? Let's put on the integral sign because we haven't integrated yet. Okay, the first term is just 1, and then plus the next term is x, but I have to plug in negative x into this x. So I will have plus negative x like this. And then we continue. Plus negative x to the second power, plus negative x to the third power, and so on forever. Put dx right here. And you know this is the same as integral well, we can plug in negative x into the sigma notation right here for this x right here, right? So this, we have the sum for n goes from 0 to infinity. Parentheses, the input now is negative x and then to the nth power. And don't forget, we should also plug in negative x into here. So neg absolute value of negative x is less than 1. Let's take care of this real quick because this is the same as absolute value of x is less than 1. In another word, the radius of convergence for 1 over 1 plus x is equal to 1, right? So let me just indicate this right here for you guys real quick. This is telling us r is equal to 1 for the power series of 1 over 1 plus x. We haven't integrated anything yet, right? But anyway, this is what we have. Now, before I integrate, let me just put this down um, in a better form because I have to take out the parentheses and the power. This is 1, and then this is minus x, and this is going to be plus x squared, and this is minus x to a third power, and you know the deal. They're alternating now, right? All right, for this, it's integral sum for n goes from 0 to infinity, and let's write down negative 1 to the nth power, x to the nth power, like that. Oh, I forgot the dx earlier because we still have the integral, right? Okay, so this is what we have. Now, integrate, integrate, integrate. First of all, let's put down the constant first. So we will have c plus, right? And integrate 1, you get x. Integrate this, you get minus 1 half x squared. And then integrate that, you get plus 1 third x to a third power. And then keep on going like this. And then put down da da da. Done. Let's integrate this. Well, here's the x, right? So let's add 1, and then we have to divide this by n plus 1, okay? And we we'll also put down the c plus first, c plus. And this is pretty much it. The series when n goes from 0, we didn't lose any terms in black, so this starts at 0, all right? Only when you differentiate, sometimes you may lose a term, so pay attention to that. All right, so 0 to infinity, and then this is negative 1 to the nth power over n plus 1, and this is x to the n plus 1, just like that. Okay, what's the deal? I have to figure out what c is. We can do so because we know the closed form, which is ln of 1 plus x, right? So you know this right here is representing ln of 1 plus x, and now we can just pick an easy number for x, into all this x right here, and we can solve for c. Let's pay attention to this and the expanded form only. This and that are the same anyway, right? Well, you cannot go wrong with 0 in this case, so let's pick x is equal to 0. It's going to be super nice. 
we get ln of 1 plus 0. This is going to give us the c right here. And then we will plus, this is going to be 0, and then minus 1 half. 0 square, and you know I'm just showing you guys a few <laughs> steps for work. All these terms, they all have 0, right? They all have x, so that will be 0, right? So put down bigger 0. Anyway, on left hand side you get ln 1, which is just 0. So this is going to be the c value, right? So we have the c, c, like that. c is 0. Okay, so this c and that c are the same. They are both 0, right? So let me just write this down for you guys right here. So ladies and gentlemen, the power series for ln of 1 plus x, it's equal to, let's put down the expanded version first. We have x minus 1 half x squared plus 1 third x to the third power. And if you notice, all this right here, they have the odd and even numbers, right? Unlike inverse tangent. And it's also alternating though. Anyway, let me just keep writing this down for you guys. Minus 1 over 4, x to the 4th power, and so on forever. In the summation form, we have the sum when n goes from, by the way, c is 0, n is from 0 to infinity, and just this, negative 1 to the nth power over n plus 1, and then you have x to the n plus 1, just like that, okay? And now, how did we get this? Well, we integrated 1 over 1 plus x. So, what does that mean? That means the r stays the same, right? r is the same. It's 1. Remember, when we integrate or differentiate a power series, the radius of convergence stays the same. Only the endpoints right, will give us some trouble. So we have to check the convergence at the endpoint. Anyway, this is what we have. And for the i, I don't know too much about it. But I know the center is at 0. And because r is equal to 1, that means I can go to the left from the center 1 unit, so I will have negative 1. And likewise, go to the right 1 unit, so I have more positive 1, right? But I do not know the convergence at the end point. So let me just put this down for now. And want to figure this out. Remember, this right here represents the x values. So we have to plug in x equals to negative 1 into this series to see if it works or not. And likewise, plugging 1 into this series right here to see if it works or not, right? So now let's get to work. When x is equal to negative 1, we plug into here, and this is what we'll have, right? And you see, we have negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the n plus 1 power. We can just add the exponents together. So n plus n, that's 2n, and then plus 1. And notice that this is the same as saying negative 1 to the 2n power times negative 1 to the first power, right? And the good thing about this is that this right here is always equal to 1 because the power here is always even. We have the 2n right here. In another word, this is actually not alternating. We just have negative 1 to the first power on the top. This is always negative, in fact. And if you would like, you can bring this negative right here to the front of the summation. And now, if you look at this series, when n is equal to 0, 2, 1, 2, and so on, plug into here, what kind of series do you get? When n is equal to 0, you get 1 over 1. When n is equal to 1, you get 1 over 2. And then the next one, 1 third. And then 1 fourth, and so on, so on, so on, right? And if you just look at the blue series, it's always positive. 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth, and so on. That's what. This is just the harmonic series, isn't it? And we have the negative version of it. So we know this right here diverge because we can say this like the harmonic series diverges. Okay? So that means I will come back here and I will use the parentheses because I cannot include negative 1. Okay? And in fact, because you know this right here is representing ln of 1 plus x, well, x right here cannot be negative 1 either, right? Otherwise, I will get ln of 0 inside. That's no good. However, I'm just doing this to show you what if you didn't know the closed form. What if you just have to work with this? And remember, this is what you have to do though, right? So be sure you are plugging the x value into the series and then check to see if it converges or not. 
On the other hand, when x is equal to 1, right, for this endpoint here, plugging 1 into this x, and this is what we'll get, 1 to the n plus 1 power, this is always 1. So now you see this is negative 1 to the n. This is actually alternating, right? And then we put the 1 over 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 on the side, like this. Well, in this case, this is an alternating version of the harmonic series. So this actually converges, right? So we can say the alternating, so let me just put this down, alternating harmonic series, in this case, actually converges. So I can come here and use a square bracket right here. Therefore, for the i, we know at the end, okay, we have negative 1 and 1. But for negative 1, we cannot include this. And for positive 1, yes, we can. Right? So as you can see, this is an example that for power series, for the interval of convergence, one of the endpoints doesn't work, but the other one does. And once again, just be sure you do the check. Do not rely on the function, right? Do not rely on the function and say, hey, when you're plugging 1 into here, it works. Because sometimes, first of all, you may not know what the function is in the first place. And sometimes we'll just have to work with the power series only and find its interval of convergence. And another thing is that, look at this right here, for example. Even though I know this power series represents this function, 1 over 1 minus x. And it seems that it's totally legitimate for me to plug in negative 1 into this x, isn't it? That would be 1 over 1 minus negative 1, which is 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 1 half. However, the interval of convergence for this, for the best friend, is that we do not include negative 1. Once again, you see, even though this function, 1 over 1 minus x, it is good when x is equal to negative 1, but in terms of the interval of convergence, we are not including the negative 1. If you plug in negative 1 into the series here, in fact, you do not end up with a convergent series. So be sure you really check the convergence at the end points with the power series. Do not use the function. Anyway. So now let's take a look at how we can change the index in the power series. So earlier we have seen that ln of 1 plus x is equal to the series when n goes from 0 to infinity, and then here we have negative 1 to the nth power over n plus 1, and then multiply by x to the n plus 1 power. However, this is not what they have in our textbook, right? Because if you notice, what they actually have is x to the nth power. Well, what happened? This is what we can do to fix the index and also work with the n. It's all about instead of the formula and also the index here and there, all right? So if this is what we had, x to the n plus 1, and if this is what we want, x to the n, just ask yourself, what happened from here to here? Well, we just took away 1, right? If that's what we did, we just have to then do the same thing for the rest of the n's in the formula. So, right here, earlier we had negative 1 in a parenthesis, and it was to the n power. Now, we have to subtract 1 here, so it becomes n minus 1 power, right? And likewise, earlier this was n plus 1 down in the denominator. We have to take away 1 now, and it will be just the n, right? And you see, this is how we can fix the formula inside. Here is the time that we have to compromise it. So we still have the sigma notation. But once again, earlier, we just took away 1 from the n instead of the formula. To compromise it, we had to add 1 here and add 1 here. That's it. So in this version, it will be n goes from 1 because 0 and we add 1 back. Now we have the 1, right? And likewise, I should also add 1 to this, but infinity plus 1 is still infinity, so we have just 1 to infinity, this, all right? Either form is okay, that's it.